All right, here we go. This is Mr. Kyle Myers Mathematics, and let's just jump right into it. So today I want to talk about, well, kind of want to demo something again. So last week I did the SAT Math Practice Test 1 demo non-calculator section, so you can see that over here, and um, got all the questions right. Awesome. So today I'm going to do the calculator section. So I'm going to scroll down here. Just wanted you to see what I did from last week. Um, I'll put a link to the uh, video in the description below. But over here you can see we have 55 minutes, 38 questions. So you have a little more than a minute per question. Um, but uh, you do as well on the non-calculator section. So just a little bit more time per question on the calculator section, but that's because they just are like, hey, you have a calculator, so we'll give you more time. Um, same reference sheet as before. So that's going to be the same. And um, I'll go ahead and start the time and we'll get into it. So I'm actually going to have my phone off to the side here. Uh, so you won't be able to see this, obviously, but I have a timer on my phone for 55 minutes. And I'll start that in just a second. And then I'll flip over to my uh, TI-84 calculator app, uh, which has all the same functionality, actually a little bit less functionality than a regular standard TI-84 calculator um, that you would use on the SAT. Um, and I would highly recommend using uh, an 84 um, unless you already have uh, a graphing calculator of some kind that's approved for the SAT. Um, but I would recommend highly using a graphing calculator since they let you do that on the calculator section. It just makes your life a little easier. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and start. All right. And scroll back over and we'll get started. So number one, I'm going to scroll in here. John runs the target heart rate. Target heart rate, okay. Okay, on which interval is the target heart rate strictly increasing, then strictly decreasing? Okay, uh, so let's see. Between 0 and 30? Nope. 40 and 60? Uh, nope. 15 and 65? Nope. 70 and 90? 70 and 90. Well, I mean, it's staying the same from... So I would say... I would say D so far, but I'm going to come back to that one because that one was its a rough problem for a number one. I normally skip those sorts of ones, but I forgot to skip it. Normally I would skip something that's really long like that. Okay, Y equals KX, K is constant. Oh, okay, it's one of those. Okay, cool. So, uh, okay, so let's see. Uh, Y is 24 when X is 6. Okay, so then that'd be 4. So K is 4. Um, so 20, see? All right. Let's scroll on over to number three. L and M are parallel, okay. And S and T are parallel. Wow, a bunch of parallel lines. All right. Measure of one is 35. Measure of two, okay, then it would just be the supplement to one. So um, let's see, 35, 180. So that'd be one, oh my gosh, math. Wait, I have a calculator. I don't know why I can't math right now. 145. That was pathetic. I should have been able to do that in my head. When you have a calculator, sometimes it's just a little crutch. If 16 plus 4x is 10 more than 14. Oh, I love these. These are so fun. 16 plus 4x is 10 more than 14. What is the value of 8x? Okay, cool. So 10 plus 14, that's 24. Subtract 16. That would be, what, 8? Eight? 8 equals 4x. We want, what, 8x? So uh, double it. 8x would be 16. C. All right. Cool beans. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's raining really hard outside. So that's in the background. Which of the following graphs best shows a strong negative association? Aha, uh -huh, strong negative association. Er, that would be D. Number six. One decagram is 10 grams. 1,000 milligrams is a gram. Oh, cool. All right, uh, hospital storage. One type of medicine in two decagram containers. Okay, two decagram containers. How many one milligram doses? Okay, one milligram are there in two, one two deca, this is really confusing. 
All right, so uh, one type of medicine in a two decagram, which is 20 grams, 20 grams. Okay, so we have 20 grams. Um, and then 20 grams, we multiply it by 20, so it'd just be 20 with three zeros, so 20, zero, zero, zero milligrams. So how many one milligram doses are there in a two, de oh, okay, so 20,000. All right, that wasn't that complicated. It's just really worded weird. Okay, number six is D as well. Oh, take off the draw. All right, number six, on to number seven. Rooftop solar panel insulation in five cities. One, two, three, four, five. Number of rooftops, solar panel insulation in five cities. 27,500. Okay, total number, wow. What is the appropriate label for the vertical axes of the graph? Number of installations. Uh, well, that's nine. Plus five is 14. That's 20, 24, 27 and a half. Yeah, so 27 and a half thousand. It'd be thousands. Nine thousand, 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 thousand. Yeah, in thousands. So C. Number seven is C. Wow, it's really picking up out there. It's really coming down. For what value of n is n minus 1 plus 1 equal to 0? Well, let's see. There should be two of those values. So n minus 1 plus 1 could be uh, 0. So 0. Actually, no, it wouldn't be. No such value. Um, because this absolute value at most, well, at, at the very least, could be zero. It couldn't be any less than zero. And I need it to equal negative one. But it can never equal negative one because it's an absolute value, so it has to be D. All right. Tricky, tricky. Number nine and 10, we're following this information. A equals 1,052 plus 1.018 T. In the air, depends on the temperature. Uh -huh. D for temperature, I'm assuming. Yep, T for air temperature. <laughs> Excuse me. A for the speed of the sound wave, which is weird because A normally stands for acceleration. Uh, in terms of the speed of the sound wave. This, what? Which of the following expressions? Oh, the air temperature. I didn't read the first part. Okay, what? So we just need to solve for T, it'd be A minus 1,052, so that looks like A so far. Yeah, it's A. All right, uh, and then where's 10? Is it 9 and 10? Okay. Uh, which of the following air temperatures will the speed of a sound wave be closest to 1,000 feet per second? 1,000 feet per second. Is it in feet per second already? It is, okay, so no tricks. So 1,000, you would subtract 1,052, so it'd be negative 52 and then you divide by 1.08. So negative 52 divided by 1.08. And I get negative 48 point blah, 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 so B. Cool, cool, cool. Numero unse, which of the following numbers is not a solution of the inequality, blah, 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 blah. So let's see here, so that'd be, um, should I move the X over there or over there? Let's just move it over there. So that'd be x, and then that'd be plus 3, so negative 2. So x is less than or equal to negative 2. x is less than or equal to negative 2. So that'd be that way. Okay. So, oh, which of the following is not a solution? Well, it should be. Oh, which of the following is not a solution? Right, right, right. Okay, so I was like, wait, what? So A. I'm not running on all cylinders today. 12 number of seeds in each of 12 apples. Okay, 12 apples. Two, six, yeah, it looks like 12. Basically, it's going to run close as the average number of seeds per apple. Okay. So number of apples, number of seeds. So if I if I plot this a little bit differently, maybe. Nah, that's all right. I'll just count the number of apples. So there's two apples here. Let's get rid of that. So there's two there, 
two there, one there, one there, um, and then one, two, three, one, two, three. So it's right in between to be like 5.5. Which of the following? The arithmetic mean number of seeds per apple. Um, yeah, I'm getting like 5.5, so I'm just going to come back to this. But it's got to be either B or C on that one. Because I don't want to waste too much time thinking about that. I'll just come back to it, and that way I, have, I know I have plenty of time. All right. Number 13. Is that going across the whole thing? Wow. I've never seen it do that before. Uh, let's see, male, female, gender, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, total, course, tenters, to ask which math course they were currently enrolled in. Which of the following categories accounts for approximately 19% of all the survey respondents? Of all the survey respondents. So that would be 19, 19%. Which of the following is 19%? So it would be, it would be something something over 310 equals 0.19, which is 19%. So basically, I just multiply by 310. Okay, 0.19 times 310. And I get 58.9, which is 59, which is the males in geometry. Let's see. Cool. All right, so 14. Lengths of fish. Hmm, fish. 21 brown bullhead fish. That's oddly specific. The outlier measurement of 24 inches is an error. Ah, huh. okay. But, I mean, that seems like it'd be an error. It's a really big fish. It's one of those, uh, my fish is this big stories. Which will change the most of the 24 inch measurement is removed from the data. Uh, well, let's see. If it's skewed, if it has a, it's a right skewed, so that means the mode would still be at the top of the hump, and then the median, and then the mean is followed. So the mean would change the most, it looks like. So A, that's just kind of a, that one was just kind of like a vocab problem. Do you know your vocab, your stats vocab? All right, 15 and 16, refer to this thing. Graph above displays the total cost C in dollars above for H hours. Okay. Cost C time hours. Okay. What does the C intercept represent? Um, so that would be when time has started. At time zero. So this is uh, total cost of renting a boat by the hour. So yeah, that would be the um, the initial cost. The initial cost before any time is accounted for. Uh, let's see, what's the following? H and C. Ah, very interesting. Okay. So we need the slope. And let's just kind of draw on this here. So it looks like all the little tick marks are one. So that's one, two, three, rise three. And oh, this is one. It just goes over one, which just has a lot of space. So three over one, so it's a slope of three. Slope of three, the only one that has a slope of three, oh, C and D, but that one starts at five, so it's gotta be C. Cool to the beans. All right, that was 16, 17. Complete graph of the function F is shown in the XY plane. For what value of X is the value F of X at its minimum? The graph of the function f is shown in this. Okay. X is the value f of x at its minimum. <clears throat> oh, okay. Yeah, I was blinking on that one. Okay, so for what value of x? Um, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. B. Do, 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 do. In the xy plane, if 0, 0 is a must be, a must be true. Okay, so zero, zero is a solution. Interesting, very interesting. So that'd be zero, zero. So A has to be greater than zero. That has to be true. And then zero, 
come on, zero, zero plus b. So b has to be less than zero. So if a, oh, wait, did I write that sign right? I'm not even sure which way that was going. Okay, so a is greater than zero, b is less than zero, which means a would have to be greater than b, so it's a. Um, the other one is the reverse. The other one is the absolute value. And the other one is a is equal to negative b. Okay, so cool. 19. Food truck. Mmm, food truck sells salads. Oh, salads. Man. Oh, this is one of those uh, those things. Okay. So salads for 650, 6.5s, plus two drinks. They made eight, three, six point five. And all the salads and drinks together. Uh, let's see, we're selling a total of salads and drinks, 209. How many salads were sold that day? Okay, cool. So the easiest way usually is elimination with these because it's already kind of set up for it. And we want to eliminate D because we want salads. So let's just multiply by negative two. So negative two S minus two D. Negative two times 209. I don't feel like mathing today. That's 418. Negative 418. All right. And we're going to subtract 836.5. So get negative 418.5. Oh, positive. Because I'm subtracting that. Okay. And then that goes away. 6.5 minus that. That's 4.5s. Divide by 4.5. Divide by 4.5. And I get 93. Oh, 90 what? 93. There we go. How many salads? 93. B. Number 19 is B. Cool. On to number 20. How are we doing on time? I'm going to check my time on my phone. 39 minutes. Okay. Alma bought a laptop computer at a store. It gave a 20% discount off its total price. Total amount she paid for in cash was P dollars. Okay, including an 8% sales tax. I don't feel like doing this. We're going to come back to it. It's got a lot of wording, and I just I just don't feel... Oh, that has even more. Yeah, we're going to skip that, too. Whoa, lots of numbers. Yep, I just, I, I'm just i not feeling it. 22, 23, 24, 23. We're just going to skip all of that. All right, 24. Which of the following is an equation of a circle in the xy plane with a center of 0, 4? Oh, this is not bad. And a radius with an endpoint. Oh, that's a little bit worse. Okay, so the center is 0, 4. Um, so let's go ahead and add the draw tool here. So 0, 4 would mean it can't be B or D. It'd have to be either C or A. And then the radius with an endpoint of blah, 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 blah. Okay, so that, I just need the distance between the endpoint of that and the center, and then that would be the length. So, uh, 4 thirds squared, that's the difference there, and then plus 1 squared equals radius squared. So that's 16 over 9 plus 9 over 9, that's 25 over 9. Take the square root, and I have 5 thirds which is the radius, but I want to square it. Oh, very tricky, because we want r squared. So actually, I don't even need to take the square root to find the radius, because they want r squared in the formula. So 24 is a. 25. Okay. Approximate height. The ground. Ah, oh, hitting the ground. Okay. Well, it's going to hit the ground when the height is 0. So I just need to set it equal to zero. Zero equals negative 4.9t squared plus 25t. Uh, let's pull out a t. So then I'd have negative 4.9t plus 25. Obviously when time is zero, it's gonna be on the ground, but I don't care about that. So I just need to do that. So negative 25 equals negative 4.9t. 
4.9, so 25 over 4.9. 5.1 to the nearest second. Yeah, okay, so D. Cool beans, 26. We are now 26. There you are. All right, Katrina, Katarina, Katarina is a botanist. So put in, um, 20% more, 20 more, wow. Super cool. How many pairs did type B produce? Well, it has to be less than 144. So that means this is out. 20% more, type A trees, okay, so. Uh, let's see, let's do the math over here. So type A produced 20% more pairs than type B. So type B, uh, if I multiply by 1.2, then I should get type A. Type A is 144, so I just need to divide by 1.2. And I get 120 B. 27. Square field. Oh, that's so long. No thanks. Let's see. 28. Uh, just got a big picture. Okay. Inequalities. Blah, blah, blah. Which quadrant contains no solutions to the system? Very interesting. Let's just graph it on this little x, y axis thing here. So there's plus 1. And then 2x would be kind of like that. And greater than means I'd shade up. So already it looks like every quadrant except for four. But let's just go ahead and be sure here. Let's change the color to red, because why not? And minus one. Okay. And then one half, which would be dot 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 dot. And it's greater than also. But it is down here a little bit so it is in all the quadrants they are solutions in all four quadrants tricky tricky 29 oh, come on there we go the value of p of 3 is negative 2 okay must be true about p of x x minus 5 is a factor, x minus 2 is a factor, x plus 2 is a factor, a p of x must be true. The remainder, oh, here we go, the remainder when p of x is divided by x minus 3 is negative 2. Yes, that's true. Yeah, you don't know for sure that you have factors if you get a remainder. And we're already into the gridded response, look at that. I mean, I did skip like, you know, a good portion of them. All right, lots of words. I guess I'll go ahead and do it. Usually the first one is pretty easy on the gridded response anyways. Wyatt can husk a dozen, 12, oh, 12 dozen, 12 dozen years of corn. That was kind of tricky, because 12 is a dozen. Uh, at most, or a possible amount of time in hours that it could take Wyatt to husk 72 dozen years of corn. Okay. So 12, oh, forgot to do draw. Here we go. 12 dozen. Um, everything's in dozens, so I'm just going to ignore that. 12 ears of corn per hour. 12 C per hour. And at most, 18 dozen ears of corn per hour. Okay. So um, let's see. If I multiply this by 6, then I get 12. Right? So 6 hours. Six hours. This, 18, so 72 divided by 18, and I get four. So if he's husking really fast, it'll only take four hours. If he's husking really slow, it'll take him six. What is a possible amount of time in hours that could take wise to husk 72 dozen? So any uh, four, five, or six, really. Four, five, four, five, or six. But I'm going to go with five for uh, an answer just to lock one answer in in particular, just go with the middle. Post ah, I don't feel like it. 
it's too long. I'll come back to it. This one's just got a big graph. That's not too bad. Portable media players. Well, I haven't heard that since iPods. 2011. According to the online graph, what is the number of portable media players sold in 2008? The number of portable media players sold in 2008. Get my draw tool out. Okay, the number sold in 2008 is 100. Is what fraction of the number sold in 2011? So what fraction of, of I me mean it's times, the number sold in 2011. Okay, so 2011, that's here, it's 160. So it's be 100 over 160. So that's 10 over 16, which is five over eight. And I believe that's as far as we can simplify that. So five eighths. Yep, okay, cool. 34, uh, 30 minute intervals, sells time slots for programs in 30 minutes. Oh, yeah, yeah, duh. Okay, so this is just kind of one of those things where you just need to multiply it out. So it would be 30 minute intervals times two, actually, let's just do this. So. 30 minute intervals times two, that would be hours, and 24 hours in a day, every day of the week, seven days a week. Total number of 30 minute time slots station can sell for Tuesday and Wednesday, so two days. So there we go, so 30 times two times 24 times seven times two. All right, so I get, oh, and I forgot I skipped 30. 3, 34, and I get 20,160. Cool to the beans. All right, Dairy Farm News, a storage silo. Oh, a silo, and it's full of crap. Shape of the right signature. Volume of the silo is 72 pi. 35. Um, volume. Okay, so volume of a right circular cylinder, that is going to be pi r squared times height. Volume is 72 pi. That equals pi. Um, oh, and we don't know the radius, but we do know the height is 8 yards. Yards, yards, okay. Uh, diameter, also they want diameter in yards. Okay, cool. So pi's cancel. Um, divide that by eight, you get nine. Square root of nine is three. Diameter, or radius is three, so diameter would be six. 36. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay, 36, blah, blah, blah. For what value of x is the function h above undefined? Ah, they want you to say five, but it's not five. All right, so if I just go like this, you just set the whole bottom equal to zero, basically. So that squared plus four, x minus five plus four, and that cannot be equal to zero. So I'm basically gonna just solve for zero. Um, actually, this one, this one's really interesting because this is, I can, I can factor that. That's just gonna be x minus five. Um, plus 2 squared. So x minus 5 plus 2 would be x minus 3. So x would have to be 3. Let's just check it real quick. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. That's 4. Okay. And then 3, uh, it's negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. So I have negative 4 plus 4 is 0. Yeah. Cool. All right. 37. All right, and we got two more here. So Jessica opened a bank account and earns 2% interest compounded annually. Ah, compounding. Initial deposit of $100, use the expression 100XT to find the value of the account after two years. What is the value of X? Ah, okay, so compounding formula says you've got 100. Come on, excuse me. 100, and then it would be um, 
one plus r over n to the n t. Uh, it's compounded annually, so n is one. And earning 2%, so 0 0.02, 1 plus 0 0.02 is 1.02, 1.02. Final answer. All right, and then last one, might as well go ahead and read it because we're towards the end now, I'm gonna to have to start reading all these long problems. Jessica's friend, Tyshawn. Okay, cool. Found an account, earns two points. Oh, 2.5%, that's pretty good. Need an initial plus $100 in the terms of the after 10 years, how much more money will Tyshawn's initial product have earned than Jessica's initial product? Oh, okay, cool. So we just need to compare them. Um, okay, so after 10 years, so they're both depositing 100. So 100, let's kind of give ourselves some more space here. Hers was 2%, so 1.2. Oh, sorry, 1.02. 1.02. Uh, 10. And then Tyshawn found one for 2.5%, 0 0.025, after 10 years. And then we just uh, subtract those two numbers. So um, I'm sure I could probably do something fancy with that, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to type it all in. 100, and then 1.025 raised to the 10th power, minus 100, 1.02 to the 10th power, and I get 6.1, wait, that's it? Huh. Oh yeah, they are only depositing $100, and it's only a difference of 0.5%, so yeah, that makes sense. So Tyshawn made six bucks, more than Jessica. Sent, ah, near sent, and ignore the dollar sign when creating your response, okay. So then it would be six dollars and eleven cents. All right, cool. So let's just go back to whichever one I starred first. Okay, so I starred one. You know what? Let's just answer all the empty ones first. Let's go back to twelve. What do we have for time? Got twenty-four minutes still. Wow. Okay, so let's go back to twelve. Twelve, 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 twelve. 12. Let's see, 13, here's 12. Yeah, this one was weird. Okay, so for 12, let's go off to the side here, and get some extra space. So based on this, closest to the average arithmetic mean number of seeds per, oh, that's right, I was finding the median. Duh, the median was 5.5, .5, but the mean would be something else. Okay, so I would have, um, the median number of seeds per apple. Okay, so I do three plus three plus, um, you know what, let's just do this. Three times two plus five times four plus six plus seven times two plus nine times three. Right. And I get 73. Does that seem accurate? Yeah. And then divide by the um, the number of apples. So how many apples are there? Each of 12 apples. 1, 2, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah. Divide by 12. And I get 6.08. And it says which of the following is closest to the average. Okay, so 6 does make for a good answer then. So number 12 is C. Cool. All right, I feel pretty confident with that one. Let's move on. We skipped 20 through 23. 20. Here we go, here's 20. All right, Alma bought a lot. Give me 20% discount off the original price. So original price, 20% discount. So the original price times um, 0.8 would equal the sale price. Total amount she paid at the cashier was P dollars, including an 8% sales tax. So this right here would be the amount 
um, then you would take that, this would be the amount before the tax, then you would times it by the tax, um, so 1.08, 8% sales tax, so multiply by 1.08, that would give you the total, which is P, which only represents the original price of the computer in terms of P. Okay. Oh, in terms of P. Okay, so I need to just divide by the 0.8 and the 1.08. Yeah. Yeah, so it'd be D. I don't feel super confident with that. I'm going to start. Maybe I'll come back to it and find a different way to do it. But yeah, I'm also just not running on all cylinders today. All right, where's 21? Oh, yeah, that's why I skipped it. Uh, all the words. Dreams recalled during one week. Group X, group Y, and total. None. One, four, five or more. Total. Okay. Data. Precise sleep researcher. So I the number of dreams group recalled. As a group X. Uh, okay. Uh, observed early bedtimes. A hundred people who observe early bedtimes. Later bedtimes. Interesting. So you got five or more, but one to four dreams. Wow, that's really weird. Some weird data. Call it at least one dream. At least one dream. Okay, if a person is chosen at random from those who recalled at least one dream, what is the probability that the person belonged to group Y? Okay, so at least one dream, if a person chosen at random from those who are re recalled at least one dream. So at least one dream would be would be all of these guys. So here's all the people. So it'd be these totals. So 39 plus 125. So 164 would be the total number of people that had at least one dream. Um, okay. What's the probability that the person belonged to group Y? Well, it looks like group Y. Um, okay, so I just do 11 and 68, which would be 79. 79, I believe, is prime. 79, 164? Yeah, C. All right, very cool. Very, very, very cool. Ah, uh, yeah, that's why I skipped that one. <laughs> uh, that's so many numbers. Ugh, gross. All right, uh, year 2007, 8, 9, 10. Agricultural, natural resources, so much stuff. Annual budget for each of six different state programs in Kansas. Oh, Kansas is fancy. Which of the following best programs? Range, annual budget. Okay. The average rate of change in the annual budget for the agricultural, natural resources. Okay in Kansas from 08 to 010. Okay, so from 8 to 10, agricultural resources, and we want the average rate of change, it says per year, and this is annual budget, in thousands of dollars. Wow, so those are already in thousands of dollars, so I would just need to add three zeros to whatever I get. All right, well, it would just be rise over run, uh, so that's a difference of two years. So I'll just take my answer and then um, divide it by two. So four eight eight one zero six minus three five eight seven zero eight. I get that, and I divide it by two, and I get sixty four six nine nine, and then I would add three more zeros to that. Um, yeah, so that would be the per year, and then that would be in thousands of dollars. So that would be, so we can just write this out. So that would be 64, 6, 9, 9, 0, 0, 0, 0. 64, 6, 9, so 65 best approximates. So yeah, 65 looks like that's, I don't know why they decided to ran round to that. I don't know two sig figs, the data in the table is way more than two sig figs, but whatever. All right, 
of the following which program's ratio of its 2007 is closest to the human resources program ratio. Oh, gross. Okay, human resources. Let's change colors here to red. So here's human resources. Ratio of the 20, 2007 to 2010 budget uh, is closest to the human resources program of 2007 to 2010 budget. Okay, so we just have to figure out what that is. So I would take uh, those numbers, find out what that is. Five, nine, two, one. It's not a hard problem, it's just a really long problem for no reason. Minus four, zero, five, one, zero, five, zero. Take that. And this is from 07 to 10, so divide by three. So 62, three, so I get 62, three, Four, four, three. So that's how much I get there. So I want one that's close to that and figure out what that's going to be. Well, it went from four million to five million. So it upped by two million. Um, so actually, the ratio, closest to the universe program ratio of its. 2007 budget to this 2010 budget. Oh, so ratio. I'm finding the slope. I don't need to find slope. I need to find ratio. So it's a ratio of four, basically four million to six million in three years, which is about two to three. It's a two to three ratio. So I'm looking for a two to three ratio roughly. Um, okay. So let's see if I can get something similar to that. Oh, or that could also be a 1 to 1.5 ratio if I wanted to write it like that. That could also work. Okay, so uh, A is agricultural resources. So 373488. I just need to... Wait, hold on. What if I just do this? 55921 379 divided by 4 Zero five one zero five zero. Okay, so I get one point four six. Yeah, so it's pretty close, about one point five. All right, cool. So that's what I should get when I divide the bigger by the smaller is about one point five. I'm gonna write this down though. One point four six. So one point four six, and then let's see. So let's just start from the top. I guess four eight eight one zero oh, six divided by three seven three. Uh, 904, so you get 1.3, that's fairly close, 1.3, 1.3, all right, let's try again, so we would do 3, 0, 0, 8, does they even have that as a 1? Yeah, they do, okay, uh, 0, 3, 6, 3, 0, 0, 8, 0, 3, so this is a really tedious problem, really don't like this problem, 1, 6, 4, Six zero seven. One point three nine. Okay, that's that's getting closer. Let's try the next one. So highways and transportation is up next on the list. One seven seven three eight nine three divided by one four six eight four eight two. 1.21, so definitely not that one. B is looking like our best choice so far. Public safety, last but not least. 464, 233, divided by 263. This is not gonna work, 463. That's gonna be a really small number. Oh, 1.76, actually it's, it's a really big number, just kidding. <laughs> So 464, 233, 263, oh, 263. I was thinking it was 463. I was like, oh, it's going to be really small. So it looks like B is the closest. Wow, it's a really tedious problem. Not a fan of that one at all. All right, we skipped 27. How are we on time? 11 minutes and a few seconds. 
All right, 27. 27, 27, 27, 27. Yep, yeah, that's why I skipped it. It's really long. Square field. Square. 10 by 10. Okay. 10 students each mark off a randomly selected region of the field. Each mark off a randomly selected region of the field. Each region is square and has side lengths of one meter, and no two regions overlap. Students count the earthworms contained in the soil to a depth of five centimeters beneath the ground surface in each region. The results are shown in the table below. Number of earthworms, region, number of earthworms, region. Okay. Uh, okay. Which of the following is a reasonable approximation of the number of earthworms to a depth of five centimeters beneath the ground surface in the entire field? Okay. Well, um, that's ten regions. So we would just take the number of earthworms that they find, um, maybe find the average. So the average number of earthworms per region, and there's a region of one by one, and it's 10 by 10, which means it's 100 uh, for the area. Each area is a square of length of one meter, which means it's one, so I just times it by 100 after I find the average. So take the average and then multiply it by 100. So uh, let's see, I have 10 people, so just add up the 10 and then divide by 10, or just hack off a zero either way. But since I'm hacking off a zero, might as well just hack off a zero, so I just add one zero. So 1.07, uh, 147, 146, 135, 149, 141, 150, 154, 176, 166. All right, so I get that number, and then I would just times that by 10. So I just add a zero, so it's 14,700, so about 15,000, so C. 27 is C. All right, so then number 30, here we go. So for number 30, which of the following is an equivalent form of the equation of the x, y, plane of the coordinates of vertex A can be identified as constants in the equation. All right. Equivalent form of the equation of the graph shown in the x, y, plane of the vertex A can be identified as constants. Oh, because it would have to be in vertex form. Yeah, yeah, So that would be, that would be D. Okay, that was not a hard one. Uh, 33. 33. Esta aquí. Oh, I skipped it. Why did I skip that? The number of portable media players sold in 2008 is what fraction? Wait, what? I did this one. It was 5 eighths. Oh, I put the answer for it in the wrong spot. Okay, so it was 32 that I skipped. Oh, I'm glad I saw that. Here we go. I skipped this because it was all words and no pictures. Boring. Posted weight limit for a covered wooden bridge in Pennsylvania. These problems are just way too specific. All right. Uh, let's see. Posted weight limit for a covered wooden bridge. Covered trucks carrying X identical boxes, each weighing 14 pounds. So 14 pounds times X boxes equals however many pounds that is. If the combined weight of the empty delivery truck and its driver is 4,500 pounds, what is the maximum possible value? So that means 6,000. So I subtract, I get uh, 1,500 equals 14x. Divide by 14. Um, okay, maximum value of x that will keep the combined weight of the truck, driver, and boxes below the bridged post PGBGBG. 15, zero, zero, divided by 14, and I get 1.07, or sorry, 107 and some change, so 107 should be my answer. Um, but just to be sure, let's go ahead and plug it back in. 14 times 107, and then, uh, oh, not times. I want to add 4500, zero, zero, and I get 5998. Two pounds under the limit, so 107 is my answer.
1.07. Excuse me, locking that in. All right, I got all the answer, answers over there. Let's just go back here. All right, we wanted to check number 20 because I have an asterisk on that. So let's go ahead and check number 20. Numero 20. There we go. Yeah, this one I got, but I just kind of felt weird about it. Okay, so let's just plug in a number to make some uh, some sense out of it. So she bought a laptop computer. Let's say she bought a laptop computer that was exactly a thousand dollars. Boom. Okay. So then she uh, so then the store gave a twenty percent discount. So a twenty percent discount off of the original price. The total amount she paid was P dollars. Okay, but represents the original price. So the original price is a thousand. So one of these things has to equal a thousand. So a thousand. Oh, by the way, how are we doing on time? Five minutes still. Wow, a lot of time left. So a thousand dollars, and then um, give you a twenty percent discount. So I take twenty percent off, which would be the same thing as multiplying it by 0 0.8. So a thousand times 0 0.8. Um, so that's eight hundred dollars, and then. Total amount she paid to the cashier was P dollars. Total amount she paid to the cashier was P dollars, including an 8% sales tax on the discounted price. Yeah, yeah, so I already did it, right? Yeah, yeah, so 1.08, so 800, 800, I don't feel like doing that in my head, 1.08, 864 dollars was P, so 864, I should be able to take the number and do each thing and get a thousand when I do it right. So eight six four times point eight eight and I get seven hundred and sixty. So it's not a eight six four divided by point eight eight and I get nine hundred and eighty one close but no cigar point eight times one point oh eight times eight six four and I get seven forty six so D looks like the right answer, but I'll go ahead and just plug it in anyways. 864 divided by 0 0.8 divided by 1.08, and I get exactly 1,000. All right, so I was right. It just felt kind of weird. Maybe it was just worded weird, I don't know. And I already checked 12. Oh, I didn't check one. Let's go all the way back to the beginning. Back to the beginning. Which is weird because number one usually is not a hard level problem. It's possible, not probable. It just didn't seem like there was an answer for this one. Runs at different speeds as part of his training program. Target heart rate. Okay, target heart rate. Beats per minute. Uh, which interval, on which interval is the target heart rate strictly increasing then strictly decreasing ah you know what i didn't read the whole thing so it's increasing and then decreasing which would be from 40 to 60. yeah so that was an easy problem i just didn't read it right i was reading it weird because i was thinking strictly increasing only but strictly increasing then strictly decreasing would only be from 40 to 60. yeah all right cool i don't think i need any more time um i got rid of all the ones that i asterisk seized and I've answered all my problems. Let's just go run over one more time. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, da, 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 da. B, 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 A, 25, did I answer? I did, okay. Five, da, 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 da. 20 comma 160. 20 comma 160, hold on. 34. 34. Oh, oh, 20,160. Does that even fit in a grid? It has four things on here, so it does not fit in a grid. Total number of, hold on. So that's 10, 30 minute intervals at the station operates 24 hours a day, every day of the week. A total of 30 minute time slots the station can sell. So 
So it's two slimes, time slots in an hour, 60, times 24 hours in a day. Oh, I multiplied by 7 when I was only supposed to multiply by 2. So it's 30 times 2 times 24 hours in a day times 2 days out of the week. So 2880. I'm dumb. 2880. There we go. Okay. Um, 35, 36, 37, 38. All right, yeah, I'm really glad I saw that one because I would have gotten that one wrong. It wouldn't even have fit in the grid, so definitely would have uh, caught a red flag when I was actually if I was actually doing this SAT. But um, with less than a minute to spare, I'll go ahead and pause the time. I have less than a minute, but I'm done, ready to look and see how I did here. So I'm going to go over here, and all I did was just Google SAT practice test one. Well, Bing searched technically, but you know what I mean. Scoring your practice test one. So that link is already purple because I looked it up to uh, find out what the answers were to the uh, non-calculator section. And here we go. So here's the math test calculator answers. And let's see how we did. So go all the way back to the beginning. Oh, too far. There we go. Okay. So B was what I ended up locking in. <laughs> I'm glad I did. All right, so B was right, 2 is C, 3 is D, 4 is C, 5 D, 6 D, 7 C, 8 D, 9 A, 10 B, uh, 11 A, 12 C, 13 C, 14, oh, 14 was C, oh, I got one wrong. So I did not max out this SAT, I did not get an 800 on it, very interesting. So I'm going to circle this in red. So C was the correct answer for 14. I'll have to go check that out. 14 C, okay. 13 was C, 15 A, oh, didn't want that to pop up. 15 A, 16 C, 17 B, 18 A, uh, 19 B, 20 D, 21 C, 22 B, 23 B, 24 A, 25 D, Let's see, 26B, 27C, 28D. Uh, I put D for 28. Been stumped again. Maybe that's why, because I just I mentioned several times I was just kind of off my game a little bit today. Because normally I can max these out no problem. So, yeah, it's all right. It's, uh, you know it's accurate, because... Uh, I'm sure if I got all of them right, somebody would be like, oh, no, he probably looked up all the answers. I did not look up all the answers. I took this fresh. I've never, this is the only one, actually, that I've never taken before out of the 10 SATs that are available. 28 was, did I put D? Wow, I got, wait, hold on. Oh, that's 29. Wow, I just have terrible handwriting. 29D. 30D. 31. Any number between 4 to 6, inclusive. So I got that right. 32107, 5 eighths, 2880 for 34. What? 96? 96? What? 30 minute intervals. Did I still not do that right? Did I still go way above the number I was supposed to go? I feel really dumb now. Yeah, because it was, it was uh, 2, uh, 24, 48, and then times it by 2. Yeah, what was I thinking? I was really dumb. Dumb. I'm way off my game today. All right, well, I got six for that one. 36, three, 37, 1.02, 38, 6.11. All right, so that was not as good as I would have liked it to. I'm curious now to see what my score was. Um, so I'm actually probably just gonna look at those later. I don't know, I only got those two wrong. So go back to 14. Let's see. So let's look at 14. Or actually, which was on 28. So 28. Oh, yeah, 28. If the system of inequalities, blah, 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 is graphed in the xy plane, which quadrant contains no solutions to the system? Yeah. Uh, graphed it and all of them intersect a 
quadrant. 1 half x minus 1, and it's only strictly greater than. Oh, but it would only be both of their solutions. It says and, and I was thinking or. Yeah, I'm really off my game, because it would be and, so it would only be what they have in common. So if it's only what they have in common, let me graph that again. So only what they have in common. All right, so let's say this one's red. So plus one's right here. 2x, so it'd be something like that. And it would be all of that. All right. And let's change to blue. Minus one would be right here. One half x would be like that, kind of. And all up here. So let's go ahead and change to, is there a purple? There we go. So it would be this. This would be what they have in common. This overlaps all the quadrants except for four. Yeah, I was thinking like, hey, quadrant four is intersected a little bit, but only by the one graph, and it's only what they have in common. Wow, that was dumb. Yeah, so it was quadrant four. It was C for 28. 28 was C, yeah. All right, whatever. It is what it is. And <laughs> that was just a dumb mistake. 14 was actually C, so let's check out what that one was. Come on, there we go. 14, 14, 14, 14, here we go. Lengths of fish. And the right answer was C. Oh, I was thinking uh, measures of central tendency. I didn't even see C was a possible answer. Well, yeah, of course the range is going to change by the most because you're getting rid of the outlier. Oh, that was a dumb question. They always ask these sorts of questions when it talks about measures of central tendency. That was tricky. That was a really tricky problem. Tricky, tricky, tricky. All right, well, um, so let's go ahead and add up all the totals here. So scoring your SAT. And I got all of them right except for one, two, three. I missed three problems, so let's see what that gets me. Uh, 58 is a perfect score. So I got one, two, three problems missed. That means I got a 760. So not a perfect SAT score, only a 760. But hey, uh, if you can manage to get a 760 on your SAT, then props, because 760 is a great score. Now, if you're trying to get into like Harvard or something, you know, maybe try to, try to max it out. And um, if I took the SAT um, for real, for real, you know, obviously, you know, want to do a lot of prep work, make sure I'm ready the night before and do all kinds of prep and, you know, make sure I'm in a, a good environment and everything like that. Um, I'm in a, a cabin in the woods right now, actually. And uh, there's a lot of like noises because there's actually a lot of other people in the cabins uh, nearby. It's like one of those cabins among cabins kind of things. But that was our thing for today. So I'll go ahead and pull these back up, I guess. I don't need to close those out. But um, this has been Mr. Kyle Myers Mathematics. And if you haven't already grabbed my awesome free guide, it's the five math mistakes everyone makes and how to avoid them. It's on my website, myersmathematics.com. Link in the description below. And uh, yeah, and if you found this video helpful, give it a like, uh, subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this, and I will see you in another episode.